Gang, gang, we are back in the home lab again, and I am super excited because we're going to be taking a look at a product from a company that I've wanted to test out forever. They go by the name of Ice Whale. No, 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 not that Ice Whale. Try again. Nah, not the Johnny Dang version either, man, but that looks sweet. Yeah, there you go. That Ice Whale. The maker of a ton of hardware with a bunch of cool peripherals. And they also are software people because they have two different operating systems. One of which is called Casa OS. And if you've watched this channel, you know how much I do use and like Casa OS. If you're not familiar with this, this is an operating system designed to help you not only manage your NAS, but gives you a awesome, organized, and really pretty looking environment in order to do one click installs of your applications that you may be interested in self hosting. And it's one of the reasons I've always said, look, Casa OS is a great way to go. If you're a beginner beginners, but they've upgraded that as well. Now with a new operating system called Zima OS and a new board called the Zima board Two. So we don't typically do unboxings on this channel. All right, so there's that. Not a very, not a very big box, not very impressive. Okay, I guess it's all right. But when it's this good and done with this much intention and purpose, I think it deserves its own section. Once you get this pretty cool elastic band off and you open it up, it becomes clear that not only does this packaging, but it also serves another purpose. And that purpose is to provide a stand. If you cut off the top here, you can have a base for your Zima board too and two 2.5 inch SSDs. I really like people who are thinking this way and companies that think this way, because now we're just not tossing it out. We can actually use this if we need it. Down below that, there's another really cool personal attention from the founder, Lauren. I won't read it all, uh, although it's all really good. I'll read something that I think is pretty impactful. While AI reshapes industries, you've anchored us to the timeless needs of explorers, sovereign control over personal data, locally rooted intelligence, and the freedom to pioneer digital frontiers with relentless curiosity. Zima poured to exist for creators like you. Every module component whispers a truth. Real intelligence begins with respecting your data sovereignty. And I just think that's really cool to support a company that really understands the ethos of many of us home labbers. Now underneath that, let's get on with the show because here is the real star, the Zima board two. At its core, the Zima two board is an X86 based board running an Intel and series CPU as dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, native SATA ports, a PCIe slot and passive fanless cooling. That combo alone already tells you who this is for. This isn't just a tinkering board. This is a set and forget it server that's quiet and efficient. Now let's talk hardware because this is where the Zima board two really separates itself. As I mentioned, you get an Intel N150 quad core CPU, which again means a full x86 capability, proper virtualization support, no ARM weirdness with things like Docker images, and the memory is LP DDR5, soldered up to 16 gigabytes depending on the model you go with. And yeah, unfortunately, it's not un upgradable, it's soldered on the board. But for workloads that this board is meant for, it makes sense. Now, the big one, you get two native SATA ports. Yeah, that's right. No USB adapters, no hacks, just plug the drives in. And on top of that, there is a PCI 3.0 times four slot, which again means that you can add in a bunch of different boards, things like NVMe expansion boards, 10 gigabyte networking cards, extra SATA controllers. All of this is wrapped in a solid aluminum chassis that acts as a heat sink. They did, I will say, include this fan, which you may want to use if you're going to have a constant workload on this. It also includes dual 2.5 gigabyte ethernet on board. And that is a huge thing because that opens it up to be a serious NAS, a router or firewall, a Proxmox or Docker host, or even a small edge server. This is not marketing fluff. This is for real throughput for real workloads, in my opinion. And if you're ever bottlenecked a Pi at like gigabit speeds, you already understand what this means. 
But there are a few things and limitations you should probably be aware of. First, very simply, it doesn't have Wi-Fi or it doesn't have Bluetooth. So if you need those things, this is not going to have it. You're going to need to add those via the USB ports or even if you want to use the PCIe port. And secondly, if you're looking for like a virtualization beast, well, this probably isn't it. Because remember, the N150 only has four cores and four threads. This thing also has onboard RAM that's soldered on. So you're either going to have eight or 16, which doesn't leave you a whole bunch to spread around with all your virtual machines or whatever you may have. So if you're looking to set up like a VM farm or something, this probably isn't the device for you. In terms of storage, it does either come with 32 or 64 bit eMMC storage on board. However, it does not have any type of onboard NVMe drive slot. So if you want to use the onboard storage for your OS, you can. But if you need anything more or you don't trust it on the eMMC for whatever reason, you will have to use something like the SATA drive. Or if you want NVMe drives, again, you can hook up a card to the PCIe slot. Out of the box, this does push the Zima OS, which is a Debian-based installation. And honestly, it's clean, it's simple, it's beginner-friendly, and it reminds me a lot of Casa OS. So if you've worked with Casa OS, you have no problems. But here's one of the important parts. You're not really locked into this either. Remember, because this is x86, we have a lot of options, and we can also use a lot of open source softwares. Things like Proxmox, Ubuntu Server, TrueNAS Scale, PFN Sense or OpenNSense to make it a router, or anything else that runs on an x86. That's a real server board, not an appliance pretending to be one. But I think this is where the Zima Board 2 and the Zima OS actually shine, because if you're looking to run things like Home Assistant, Jellyfin or Plex, Docker containers, Pi-hole, AdGuard, small VM workloads, this board is perfect. It's low power, silent, and reliable. It's just something you can tuck on a shelf, forget about, and trust that it will work. All right, we've got two models here. First, what I'm gonna call like the light version. That's gonna give you eight gigabytes and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. That's gonna run you $219. Then you have another version that's going to give you 16 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC onboard storage. That's going to run you $299. Now, before you say, Hill, that sounds expensive, just hear me out. Go into the marketplace and try to find a mini PC with just this one feature. I mean, eight gigabytes of RAM is fine. Does it have two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports on it? And if it does, it's probably around the same cost, if not more expensive. But oh yeah, does it have SATA ports? And oh yeah, does it have a PCIe port exposed? No, it probably doesn't. And if you do find those things, I can tell you it's going to be way more expensive even than the $299 upper end model. So yes, this is a bit of a Frankenstein, but I think it's a Frankenstein that fits rather nicely into home labbing. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f*** is that? What is that private pile? I kind of look at it like the perfect home lab in a box because it becomes kind of like this hardware platform but then you also get included the zima os software now i've used casa os for years which is kind of the one they did first and now this is a new improved version and i can tell you at least on the casa os side i've never had a problem with it whatsoever and i've probably used it now for four years it's really good it's updated all the time and I, I, I highly suggest you check it out. But now it's even better, gives us some other bells and whistles, makes it a lot easier to do things like virtualization. I think it's a win-win all around. And if you are a beginner, Beginners. I do say, this is your home labbing in a box that you were looking for. And of course, if you're a seasoned Zen master or somewhere in between, I still think this deserves a spot in your server rack or even on your shelf just to tinker with. Or if you want to have that versatility where you can quickly build something and deploy it wherever you need it. To me, this is going to be like the Swiss army knife of my home lab. But anyways, they sent this over for my evaluation for free. There was no money exchanged. I do get to keep this, which I'm super amped about, but I like it so much. I'm probably going to buy another one for in terms like transcoding or doing anything like that in your home lab, or you just want to set it up and use the operating system, to just quickly deploy all the applications you want. It's in there. It's that solid. 
please check it out. The link's down below. Anyways, my name's Hill Phantom. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.